How's it going Eliminators? So today's video is going to be a little different than what we're normally used to. I've got a Toro wheel horse here. It's an 825 and it's got a pretty bad oil leak. So I'm going to take you through the steps on how to fix that. Now the reason this video is slightly different than normal is because I've got a mix of pictures and videos to share with you. So I'll be putting in some pictures and doing a little bit of voiceover as well as integrating some videos that I filmed along the way. So let's get right into it. I would have loved to have done a full video breakdown on this on how to pull an engine off of a Toro 825 wheel horse. I think this is a 1990. I'm not too sure because on the model number sticker here everything's just completely worn off which what a terrible idea to put a plastic you know sticker right underneath the head of the engine like literally the hottest point of the engine they couldn't have put it over here where the battery is right they couldn't have put it under here like this is mint condition right if you put a sticker there it would have been perfect but no no they have to put the sticker right there under the head so half of it kind of burned off, but because I have the 128, I figured out that this was, I believe it was a 56 128, which I ran the number and it came up Toro 825. So I think it's a 1990. And the engine model number is a 191707, and it's a Briggs and Stratton eight horse vertical shaft. We can see here there's an oil leak coming from the valve cover, and someone's tried to remedy that by using some orange RTV silicone. But the most extensive oil leak is under the engine, and that's most likely coming from the crankshaft oil seal. So that'll need to be replaced. Now, removing this engine does take a fair bit of work. We can see here that they've built a frame around the rear of this mower and the majority of it will need to be removed. Now, I'll end up running into problems with this later, but we'll come back to that after. First up, we'll need to remove our drive tensioner spring to allow us to get some slack on the belt. Then, once I've removed the three engine bolts, I'm able to slide the engine forward. Now, there are locations for four engine bolts. However, there was only three installed on this machine. Now, it gives us an even better view of the amount of oil that has been leaking from this engine over time. We can see here that it's all over the frame, especially near the engine mounts. Now, those engine bolts also double as your belt keepers, so you'll want to keep everything together. Notice how I've kept the bolts and the nuts together, so reassembly will be easier. You can also see that I've loosened the bolt on the crankshaft that holds the stack pulley. This will need to be removed by sliding the pulley down off the shaft to make removal of the engine easier. I've also removed the bar that was on the back of the mower. This was easy, as it only required four bolts to be removed. However, two of those bolts were actually support arms coming from the bottom of the machine, so they'll need to be pushed forward and out of the way. I then move on to removing the choke cable. Now notice the two black marks on the cable. I've marked that before removal. This will help me during reassembly by allowing me to hook up the cable in the same location it was before. I can then remove the ground cable for the kill switch as well as the fuel line. It's at this point that I notice some oil residue and grass clippings near the oil drain tube at the back side of the engine. I'll have to keep an eye on that and we'll actually be dealing with this after. Now I figured because the engine was in running condition, the carb should be removed to prevent any oil going into it when I flip this engine upside down to install the new sump gasket. But the muffler had to be removed first to allow me to get this off. Well, I finally got the engine off. Those bolts for this seat support, they come off because you can get access at the nuts, but over here you can't get access at the nuts because the sprocket's there. So if you want to take that off, you got to take the whole axle off, and then I'd have to take the chain off. So you get this side unbolted so that this side is loose, and then over here you take a grinder and you cut so that basically now you can bend this support up far enough to pull your engine and angle it and pull it out and this guy had an oil leak clearly there's oil everywhere so i'm going to take this thing out and power wash it and there's all kinds of oil down here too nasty nasty so at least i got the engine off now i just got it on my cable a lot of work to get this off you got to disconnect the either the starter wire at the starter but there's not a lot of room back there so I disconnected it at the solenoid. To get at that, you gotta take the battery off. There's a lot of work on this thing. It's it's a machine that's basically uh, one after the other. And a one after the other is like, you know, if you wanna get that off, you gotta get another bolt off. And if you wanna take like, let's say the shroud on the engine off, the carb's gotta come off. To get the carb off, you gotta take the muffler off because the muffler covers a bolt for the the carburetor so it's like you know one after the other and this is just some of the stuff that I do when I'm not filming because stuff like this is just it's too involved to have to take my camera out every 
couple minutes and film. Okay, so once the engine was removed, I placed it on a table for inspection. This table has a hole cut into it, which allows me to put the crankshaft through and just makes working on engines much easier. I've also gone ahead and removed the valve cover, exposing the valves, valve springs, and valve breather area. This had that orange RTV silicone on it before, so I wanted to remove this and inspect the gaskets for any breaks, tears, as well as leaks. And sure enough, the gaskets did have tears in them, which could have easily contributed to the oil leak and would have been the reason why someone decided to seal it up with a little bit of silicone. Moving on, I'll start by removing the engine bolts that hold the sump into place. I believe there's six bolts in total that will need to be removed. So keep an eye on the length of these bolts as well, so you don't end up putting a longer bolt into a shorter hole. Once the bolts have been removed with a little tap from a rubber mallet, the sump slid off easily. Sometimes this can be difficult if the crankshaft is rusted. So if you'd like to see a more in-depth video of this, you can check out the video that I linked at the top right of your screen labeled how to replace a sump gasket. We now get a chance to see the inside of the oil pan or sump as they call it. And the black discoloration is normal guys. This is just sludge that is built up over time. If there's a lot of it, then you need to change your oil more frequently. Notice how this part of the gasket is dry. This is most likely from it tearing when I removed the sump. Whereas this area above near the starter at the back of the engine near the oil drain tube is very wet with oil and most likely one of the areas that was leaking. This will all be solved when we install our new sump gasket. Once I install the new gasket, I torque all the bolts to spec with some blue Permatex thread locker and this engine is ready to be reinstalled onto the machine. So I finally got the engine back into the machine, power washing it with my new power washer was awesome because it cleaned up all the grease, made things a lot cleaner so that if the engine does leak, then at least I'll know kind of where it's leaking from, but I don't think it should leak. I got a brand new sump gasket on, brand new crankshaft oil seal on there, brand new gaskets on the valve cover breather, but that little tube that comes out that goes into the car broke. The rubber kind of, you know, gets hard after a while and it's not soft and malleable and it just kind of broke as soon as I pulled the carb off so I gotta wait for that. Now when mounting the engine I also use some more blue thread locker on the engine bolts. This will prevent them from backing out due to vibration. And now that the engine is mounted notice the belt keepers have been adjusted and the bolts tightened down. My stack pulley is now reinstalled and the belts are routed accordingly. I've also gone ahead and hooked up the idler spring for the drive belt as well. Basically everything's done the carburetor and the exhaust can go on last because I have nice access to it. I still have to bolt the seat support back in, which that's no big deal for this side. This side, like I said, I ended up cutting it. So what we're gonna do is run just a pipe clamp. So I'll clean up the burrs, I'll take my tape off, and then there are two pieces of metal that go on either side and then you put a couple bolts through because realistically there's no upward force here, it's just downward force. So as long as that's bottomed out and I clamp it, then it should be good. And if this engine ever has to come off again in the next 10 years, or I don't know if the guy ever wants to do valves or, or a head gasket or something, then basically you just have to unbolt that take your pipe clamp off and you can just lift this up just like this, which is like, realistically, that's all you need is just a little bit of room to be able to lift that up a bit. So again, you know, that's the way that I did it. And I think that's the best way instead of dropping the axle, because again, if I can get a shot of this, the sprocket is there and this is a box frame. So to get at your nuts way in there, you can maybe get at that one, but the other one, it, it's super difficult. So again, you'd have to drop your axle and then you'd have to basically take your chain off. And it's like, now I, I gotta move my jack stands and it's a lot of work to do something like that where you just cut it, put a pipe clamp on there and it's done. And that there's my solution to this problem. So I just used a little hose clamp for now. If I can get a pipe clamp, then I'll grab a pipe clamp, but that'll do for now. It's pretty stable. It doesn't move when I shake it and that's all that matters. So that'll have to do for now. I've noticed that to rotate the engine too, you gotta remove the spark plug so you can get past this post. Again, if you had that removed, you wouldn't have to worry about that. But then if you remove that post, you gotta remove all the shrouding and then the key switches on that side. So it's like some machines there, I call it one after the other where to do one thing, you gotta do another and to do that, you gotta do another and to do that, you gotta, and it just keeps going, right? Like for instance, to get at um, this engine bolt, so there was only three engine bolts in this, and this one, there wasn't one in there, and I'm guessing the person who had this engine off last, or maybe, I don't know, the factory, if you put a bolt through there to come down here, you got all of your pulley systems and that black plate, and it's like a lot of work to get all that off, so that could be like another half an hour or hour 
And again, to get that stuff off, now you gotta, you know, it's a whole nother job. So to put the three bolts here, there, and then the other bolt that is your belt guide, and then up under here, you have your two engine bolts, and those are just belt keepers right there, those arms coming down. So again, I put some uh, blue Permatex thread locker on those bolts. They should not come off, at least that's done. So this engine's pretty much secure. I put 20 ounces of oil. I think it takes more, but I wanted to run low oil because again, I have to tilt the engine to go in there. And I wanted to put oil into the engine to begin with so that I could let it sit overnight to see if it would leak out of the crankshaft seal or out of the sump gasket. It's not leaking, so good. The oil leak is fixed. It wasn't leaking oil out of the head gasket, so I think the head gasket is good on this. However, every about, I'm gonna say, eight strokes of the engine, there's a little puff of white smoke coming out of the exhaust, which lets me know that it's probably an exhaust valve leak, which means that inside of your valve cover here, you have your springs, and I can put a picture up there. And what happens is your oil has to lubricate those valves going in and out. If you have a valve guide, that's the hole that the valve travels through. If you have a valve guide that's worn out, it will let oil into here and then it'll end up getting through the valve into the combustion chamber. So like I said, about every eight strokes of the engine on the exhaust stroke, there's a little puff of smoke that comes out of the exhaust, but that's no big deal. It burns a little bit of oil, so he'll have to put some oil into it every now and then, but at least he won't have a bunch of oil you know, dripping all over his belts, which he had before. This was the issue that we were trying to solve. This little pull start here was broken and it was cracked, so it pulled farther in. So I just took some hockey tape, taped that up, and now, you know, it's good to go. Like I said, the carb, which is down there, hopefully I didn't get any stuff in there. It was pretty dirty on the outside, but like I said, this thing fired up first pull and ran good. So hopefully, you know, fingers crossed, when I put everything back together, it'll go back together. You know, there won't be any issues. It'll fire right up and run good. And before, I only had jack stands in the back, so the engine was like this, but I didn't want the oil to, you know, kind of, drop to one side because I did put oil in the engine so I lifted up the front end just to level things off and that seemed to be a lot better actually because you know you can get up under the machine a lot easier so like I was saying engine reinstalled everything was good I had oil in it and I noticed that we were leaking oil from here and it was a very slow leak so over time I had just a little bit of oil dripping you guys can see and I was like where's that coming from now we can see that somebody's taken a die grinder into the back of here and they've put this elbow on but when they put this 90 degree elbow on they never put Teflon tape on that and just to show you guys how loose this is look at that so this tightens up when it's about in the 90 degree position going straight up and down and someone bent this out to go over the chain guard which is right there coming out of that hole so this is custom and it, it's not good because it's loose and we're leaking oil from there. And like I said, I had this thing on my bench after my new sump gasket and my new crankshaft seal. And I had oil in it for about 24 hours and it did not leak. It only started leaking after about 48 hours and that's when I noticed it was coming right from there. So what we're gonna do, because with the engine on, if I take this out, I can't bend the elbow because it's hitting it's hitting the, the frame and that's pretty thick steel and I don't want to go in there and grind out further with a die grinder. I will if I have to, but the customer gave me the okay to remove this entirely. So because I can't loosen that any farther because it hits the frame even with this tube off, what we're going to do is go in here with hopefully a sawzall if we can get it to fit, cut that off, unthread that and then take this plug and put this end plug with Teflon tape on it in there and then I can tighten that up with a wrench until it's tight and that should solve the oil leak problem. Then I can go ahead and put the chain guard back on and then if I ever need to drain the oil I can just use my Pella over there and have the customer drain the oil that way and it's pretty simple. So yeah, these old machines it's always one thing after another. So as you guys can see, no Teflon tape on that. We cut the elbow and the pipe off. Like no wonder this thing leaked. So what ends up happening is very, very slowly, the oil works its way down the threads 
and eventually it comes out the end and you get a very slow oil leak. So after cutting off that pipe, we were now ready to seal it up properly. I just wanted to make sure that the threads were the same so I didn't damage anything. They ended up being the same threads, so we put a little bit of Teflon tape around the threads and reinstalled it in the machine. Doing it this way will prevent any future oil leaks from this location, and as I stated before, I can just go ahead and use my Pella to drain any oil out from the dipstick tube when servicing this engine next year. I also got my new valve breather tube, so I popped that in and installed the carb as well as the muffler after that. So we're ready to bring this machine outside and fire it up. So let's see how she runs. So that's it for this Toro project that I was working on. Like I was saying guys, it was one thing after another, but I'm just happy to finally get this thing done and get it out of here. Well, that's it for today's video, guys. If you enjoyed it, think about leaving me a thumbs up. You know, it really helps me out. You can click here to subscribe and you can click over here to watch one of my previous videos. I upload every single week, so be sure to come on back next week and check the channel out for new content every single week. And as always, guys, thanks for watching.